destroyed. Welcome back to some OG Modern Warfare 2. I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching. Thanks for all the support, of course, on the older Call of Duty games. They've been enjoyable. They've been fun. I got to do some new stuff, though, soon on new MW2 because of the season update. And on top of it, I never used, like, the ISO 45 from the mid-season, actually. <laughs> I got sidetracked, and I just I didn't get around to it. Um, but it was a very good gun. I think they actually nerfed it. So I'll probably get the crappier version of the gun now, but is what it is. Today's video, though, is a story video. I don't do these a lot because, frankly, there's not a lot of stories to tell. I'm in my basement working on stuff most of the time. Not a lot of things happen for me <laughs> in terms of like, oh, check out this crazy story. You know, I was skydiving. Like, no, it's like, oh, I walked to the fridge today. Huh. I got a water. <laughs> it was awesome. I dropped it. Oh, shit. So not a lot of stories, but I do take trips. Trips for work, trips for fishing, usually. Uh, my non-work stuff. But this was a work trip, all right? When Modern Warfare 19, this is a couple years ago now, right? At this point, three years ago, was being released, they sent me, or well, they brought me and like 50 other people probably out to come play the game early and offer feedback. Some of which, of course, was ignored, some of which was listened to. I'm sorry, I had to say that. It's always annoys me when you see a bunch of changes in the game. You're like, dude, why didn't they do this? I told them this. I still want Dead Silence as a perk in every Call of Duty, frankly. Every every Call of Duty. But I digress. I'm getting too far off the point. I live in Iowa, okay? If you didn't know. Iowa doesn't have direct flights to anywhere, right? I have to basically have a connecting flight connecting flight to either Minnesota, Chicago O'Hare, Denver, whatever. Depends on which where, where which direction you're going. Typically, if I'm going to LA, it's in Denver. Uh, I had a connecting flight in Denver, right? And I get on the plane and... I'm, I hate flying, just a heads up. I'm not scared of it. I just hate the stress involved with trying to like get through the security on time, get to your gate on time, make sure that you get on the plane, don't lose anything because if you lose it, it's pretty much gone forever. It's a stressful thing. And you have to do a bunch of work ahead of time. I get my videos done ahead of time and I upload them ahead of time. I have to send the thumbnails to the designer. I have to get everything situated beforehand. It's a bunch of front loaded work. I do not like it, but I try to make time to go out to play, to offer feedback and make the game as good as possible. Like I've mentioned a ton of times, I give a lot of feedback. Whether the devs like that or hate that, I don't know. I even email them directly and do private calls. So I try, okay, to make the games good. But I get on the flight in Denver, going to LA. And after like, you know, five, 10 minutes, people getting on, who gets on and sits right next to me? Not right next to me, I guess, across from me in the aisle. I was an aisle seat, he was an aisle seat. It was freaking Drifter. I was like, oh, dude, what's up, man? How you been? I've seen you forever. And then, you know, we started talking on the flight and talking about what we're going to in the event. And at this point, we all knew it was Modern for 19, right? The game's been announced and what we'd like to see, what we'd expect. And it goes back to the, the last Modern Warfare game, right? Which was Modern Warfare 3 and 2. And we had talked about Modern Warfare 3 and how Sitrep Pro and Recon Pro ruined the game a bit. And we got to Modern Warfare 2 and, you know, <laughs> the common complaints of Modern Warfare 2 came up. One Man Army, Noob Tube, uh, explosives in general, a lot of things. And he goes, you know, they actually had a fix for, like, all of that. I was like, what? So, yeah, they had, like, a huge patch they were working on, and it was, it was in the pipeline, I guess, and it ended up being abandoned because they had to focus on, I think, probably, to, to be honest, probably the future games, which happens a lot. Um, and I was like, holy shit, they never did any of it. And this is going to come around to more recent as well in a second. You're going to know why. All right. So they had a fix for one man army, not giving you extra noob tubes or extra lethals or anything like that, which is kind of how scavenger and stuff works now. Uh, they had a fix for explosives by making blast shield better. I believe because blast shield wasn't that useful if you use danger close. I think maybe they didn't improve blast shield. They just nerfed danger close. That was probably what they did. They, they brought danger close down. So if you wore blast shield, which you could because it actually fit your tactical slot in Modern Warfare 2. It's not an extra perk. It's like a stun grenade. You just activate it. It would help you live through explosives, which would have been great for a lot of you guys. I'm sure many people. There were not a lot of updates in the original Modern Warfare 2, though. There weren't. They were very stingy with updating the game and balancing things. You saw a nerf to, I think, the Rangers, the Model 1887s. You saw, let me see, what else? What, what, there was one more thing. They, they had, okay, they had two fixes, actually, as well. For Care Package Commando Pro, I remember that being a huge problem. They fixed it. Uh, you could basically super lunge people. Like a, It was like a Halo sword lunge. It was so far away. And then there was also a javelin glitch in the game. 
which was kind of like, <laughs> it was like a recent game that had the javelin glitch too, I think. You basically could like preload a javelin, and when you would do that, if someone shot you, the javelin would go straight down into the ground where you died. Except, you know, if you have danger close on and that happens, the javelin basically kills anybody that could ever be within range of shooting you, which was the main problem. You had basically people just running around suicide bombing other people with a javelin because they would shoot them, the javelin would shoot straight down, and that person would blow up and kill like two or three people. They fixed that as well. Those are like the only updates I ever remember happening in Modern Warfare 2. Along with like DLC, I think they had some DLC maps, but in terms of balance changes, they were pretty stingy back then. So the game could have been what all of you guys wanted it to be, surprisingly, and the patch never happened. And funny enough, this happened again in Call of Duty Cold War. Okay, not, I won't say that because Cold War is nowhere near as good as Modern Warfare 2, but Cold War had a lot of updates in the works that never happened during the game's life cycle. It's why you saw some maps release post, post game's life cycle, right? Uh, because they were being worked on beforehand. And often the developers are working on stuff way ahead of what you would expect. I'll tell you more in a minute about that, but uh, they had, and this is because I guess they released a new map for Cold War like five or six months after the new game had already released, which is Modern Warfare 2, is it Modern Warfare 2? No, Cold War, World War 2, Vanguard. Yeah, so after Vanguard released, and people went back and played it because it was a great map, it was a great remake. Honestly, Cold War had a lot of really top tier remakes from the Treyarch games, and that was great. It kind of saved the game in terms of the map create or the maps in the game. They were not that good up until that point. But they had said, you know, a lot of people complained about, what was it? The kill cam, not being a final kill cam. It was play of the game. And a lot of people complained about a few other things, and they're like, oh, we're gonna fix all this stuff. It'll be final kill cam again. And I say this one specifically because that's what I remember from Search and Destroy. A lot of my friends want final kill cam to go for funny reactions and kill cams. And, <laughs> I, you know, when the new maps came out and people were going back to play, they said, well, didn't they say at some point there was supposed to be a final kill cam and it just never happened? And surprisingly, one of the developers actually responded to me on Twitter, which does not happen very often. Um, I, I don't know why they just don't. Maybe it, it's, it's probably not healthy for them, to be honest, engaging in social media. But it said, yeah, it was one of those situations where we have, we're working on it. We have, we, 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 we Overpromised and underdelivered. Which, hey, look, respect for admitting it. You messed up. It happens. It sucks because we wanted to see final kill cams, but it was one of those situations where they they wanted to do it, they tried to do it, and then they got distracted with future updates. And I say that again because a lot of times, you know, let's say we're playing season one of insert game name, or whatever the most recent Modern Warfare Two, right? We're playing season one of Modern Warfare Two this year. It was like five months ago. They are already working on season four. Like They're that far ahead. And so they release these updates and these patches and these weapon tuning and changes. And it's not always the same team. Don't get me wrong. They have plenty of teams. It's not like d defending them or anything. But they are working so far ahead that when there's major issues that come up with past updates, which can easily happen randomly, even though it doesn't seem like it, then they have to instantly double back and it creates, you know, a lot of extra work for them. And then that kind of puts them behind on the future stuff as well. So, you know, they put an update out season one, like mid season update of season one while they're working on season four and a bunch of bugs or things happen that cause major stability issues or major problems with balancing or, you know, it could be any one of fire, like number of fire drills. And now they have to spend like scramble to fix those things while still trying to maintain their lead of working on season four and, se and, the, and the, the, the future seasons. And every time that happens, those bugs take up more of their time and they lose their lead. That's just kind of how it works. Like the lead starts off strong, right? And then they kind of stagnate because they have to catch up and catch up, catch up, and it starts to move. And then they kind of get, you know, they kind of get behind. They don't have enough developers, despite that, with that, you know, you might think they do, they don't. Um, it is what it is. It's just crazy because a lot of these games have, and that's only two that I know of, have enormous, enormous balance changes that you would never know about as a player or as a fan unless you were able to speak to the developers directly. And I mean, I got lucky that one responded to me on Twitter and told me about this stuff. The other time I got lucky that Drifter, who had been working with the developers for a lot longer than I had, had talked to the devs beforehand about the older games 
there are still some original devs on their teams that have been playing and working on that since those games. I should talk to them sometime about it and ask for some stories, because they'd be cool, I'm sure, to hear about. But there are a lot of unknown updates in the games that you guys and myself have never heard of or seen that could have been massive improvements to the game. Or they could have been massively destroying the game. You never know. That sit rep change in Modern Warfare 3's life cycle was a huge surprise, and it came like five months into the game's life cycle. And all of a sudden made everything super sound whoring, and it was like, this is terrible. What, the, what happened? But there's your story video. The story of the updates, the patches, the big changes that never happened. Could have made the games insane, or in some cases, could have made some of them even worse. You never know. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. If you did, leave a like, subscribe. If not, all good, understandable. Have a wonderful day.